again guys, Matmus here with another main battle tank to talk about today and this one is another vehicle which I knew sod all about. Someone actually messaged me and said, hey Matmus, why don't you try looking at this tank? Didn't even know it existed, so it's interesting to try and learn something different about vehicles that I don't know anything about. So today we are talking about the T-84 Oplot. Now this is basically a Ukrainian made derivative of the speedy Russian T-80 tank, once considered the pinnacle of Soviet area tank design. The T-80 never got over the bad rap it received in the First Chechen War, and hundreds were pretty much knocked out by Chechen rockets. This was largely a result of quite poor tactics at the time by the tanks, and the manned untrained conscripts they put inside them. Sadly, they were sent into the middle of a city in Grozny without much infantry support, and as we clearly know, anti-tank guided weapon systems and any kind of anti-tank shoulder mounted weapons are going to do havoc on vehicles if they're not supported. Ukraine, seeking to develop its arm industry independently from Russia after splitting from the Soviet Union, designed a souped up T-80 with a more powerful engine and new turret called the T-84. Several T-84 variants were conceived, culminating in the T-84 Oplot M, which features pretty much a western-style turret mounting the latest Ukrainian sensors and defensive measures. The Oplot M is pretty agile, has very good sensors, and is well protected by active and passive defensive systems. Most notably, it offers these niceties at a price of $5 million at a time, when contemporary main battle tanks like the Leclerc and the upgraded M1s are clocking at around $8 million. Both of the tanks have three-man crews. Both the 5-ton Oplot M is larger at 2.8 meters in height, while the 46-ton T-90 keeps a lower profile at 2.2 meters. The vehicle was publicly revealed in 2008, and as mentioned before, it is an improved version rather than an entirely new design. The main components of this tank were developed back in the 1990s. The main battle tank completed the Ukrainian army trials, however it was not ordered by the Ukrainian army due to funding problems. Thailand ordered 49 of these tanks. Thai tanks have some minor modifications to meet local requirements and referred to as Oplot Ts. First tanks were delivered to Thailand in 2013. Deliveries are rather slow due to the ongoing military conflict in Ukraine and by 2016 only 20 of these tanks were delivered. The Oplot M MBT is fitted with duplet built-in explosive reactive armor of a new generation that protects against tandem warheads. It is claimed to be superior to the Russian Contact 5 ERA armor. Protection of the hull size was also highly improved, and the tank is fitted with a Shatora countermeasure system, which is pretty much going to reduce most hit probabilities of enemy anti-tank guided weapon systems with semi-automatic guidance. It has been reported that this main battle tank can also be fitted with the Zaslon active protection system. The Oplot M main battle tank is armed with a 125mm fully stabilized gyroscopic smoothbore gun fitted with a carousel type autoloader which is very effective being able to get rounds into the chamber very very quickly. The vehicle is capable of firing the 9K119M Reflex NATO designation AT-11 Sniper B gun launched anti-tank guided missiles. These missiles are launched in the same manner as ordinary munitions through the main barrel and have an incredible maximum range of around 5,000 meters. Now that's really pushing out the punch for this thing guys and I'm going to do a video on this in the future of how tank munitions are changing and how really focusing back to main gun missile launched munitions are coming back into play and I think it's something that uh, countries are really starting to look into develop for their armored battle groups. There are a total of 40 rounds that can be carried inside the hull, which is quite a few rounds for a vehicle of this size, guys. This Ukrainian tank has a hunter-killer engagement capability, which is pretty standard now for all main battle tanks. If you don't know what hunter-killer mode is, guys, basically it allows the gunner and commander to work independently from one another to both hunt and engage targets at the same time. So that basically allows for the gunner to lock onto a target once it's given from the commander and allows the commander to then carry on using his imaging system to locate other tanks. And this is standard guys, it's nothing really new, but it is nice to see that this vehicle has been upgraded to have that capability because it has no chance of surviving in a tank on tank engagement if it does not have that hunter killer engagement capability. The commander, as mentioned before, uses the panoramic sight with thermal vision to search for those targets. Once the target is selected, the gun is laid on the target automatically and the gunner completes the aiming and firing process. During the time, the commander looks for the next target, completing the hunter-killer engagement cycle. Such engagement method is present on all main battle tanks as I mentioned, however this vehicle is quite new to the system so it's going to be interesting to see how the crews are capable of working with this new system together, considering that the vehicle is quite new in production. 
Secondary armament consists of a coaxial 7.62mm machine gun and remotely controlled 12.7mm machine gun mounted on the top of the roof. Once again, militaries around the world, including obviously now Ukraine, have focused highly on crew protection, being able to give the commander the ability to utilize that machine gun on top of the vehicle without having to come out of the turret. This is increasing crew protection and giving a lot better visibility to engage a target with that vehicle using the camera systems that are on board that weapon system. That is very key, guys, and once again, it's going to be very important to help work on the battlefield to be able to find and engage targets. Unlike its predecessor, this vehicle does have highly upgraded improved sights, aiming and observation systems including an upgraded ballistics computer to allow this vehicle to fire its stabilized main gun on the move, which once again if coming into a tank on tank engagement, it's imperative that the vehicle is able to engage targets on the move. The vehicle is operated by a crew of three, including commander, gunner and driver. There is no need for a loader as the tank has its automatic loading system. The smaller crew therefore allows to reduce overall dimensions of this vehicle, both width and height, making it a lot smaller of a target on a battlefield. This is increasing its hull down positioning which is allowing giving it a smaller silhouette and allowing the tank to see the enemy before the enemy sees it and potentially engage it. The vehicle is powered by a Ukrainian 6TD TE turbocharged diesel engine developing a whopping 1200 horsepower. It is improved and more crazily enough, environmentally friendly version of the previous 6TT2 diesel engine, used on the T84 main battle tank previously. Another engine, the 6TD3, is currently under development for this tank. It will have a power output of another whopping 1500 horsepower, which is starting to get standardized to most main battle tanks now, and they need more power. The more weight and armor that you put on these vehicles, they need that little bit more oomph. Well, I guess that's what they're going for with trying to upgrade the power pack. The tank is also fitted with a new auxiliary power unit which powers all systems when the main engine is shut down, for instance Silent Watch. The Oplot M is fitted with a deep water wading kit and can ford water obstacles up to 5 meters deep, which, just like any Soviet or Russian block style tank, they are very very key in making sure that their vehicles are amphibious and it looks like the Ukrainians are focused on this quite a bit too. They wanted to make sure that you could literally dunk this vehicle underwater and keep it rolling which honestly I think Western nations have forgot quite a bit about and maybe it's just not their primary focus and I kind of get that but it is nice to have a vehicle that is literally able to go swimming across a river or a stream or any other kind of water obstacle because there is no real Western vehicles that are able to do that I don't think anyway as functionally as this kind of vehicle does and that's pretty cool to have I mean these guys are testing this vehicle out right now in a giant submersible tank putting it under some pressure testing I guess and then just firing her up and seeing if she smokes off again which clearly we see this vehicle has passed this test with flying colors absolutely incredible engineering and very very uh, very very smart to be able to produce a vehicle like that how reliable is it who knows we'll never know unless you actually operate the vehicle enough if there's anyone who has operated this vehicle please let me know i'd love to hear your experiences with operating this vehicle underwater as a submarine um but yeah i, I, th I do think this is quite impressive for this kind of vehicle and something that it would be nice to see if if western vehicles in the future would maybe try and touch base on who knows with the power plants mentioned, this vehicle was able to reach a top speed of around 40 miles per hour with an operational range of nearing some 340 miles. The vehicle exhibits one of the best power to weight ratios of its class which enables it to be considered probably one of the fastest main battle tank elements in service anywhere in the world. Fuel consumption is up to 25% less than found on the original T80UD which makes it a much more efficient system. Suspension is via torsional bar with hydraulic dampers for excellent cross country performance which is pretty standard on most Russian vehicles. As with any main battle tank today, it does have 12 smoke grenade discharges in banks of 6 on either side of the turret. The T84 Oplot became a rather ambitious modernization program for the T84 series as a whole. The turret was redesigned again and of welded construction. Ammunition was now stored in a separate compartment from the crew to help increase crew safety in the event of a direct hit from an enemy projectile or missile. The export minded T84 120 Oplot sports a revised turret installation and fits a NATO standard 120mm main gun with the new autoloader. Just like any main frontline tank system available, the T84 has evolved into various other battlefield forms including the Brem 84 Armoured Recovery Vehicle, ARV also known as the Atlet the BM-84 Ridge Lair and the BTM-84 Infantry Fighting Vehicle. The latter is actually currently residing in a prototype form guys as of this video. 
The infantry fighting vehicle version deserves special notice really because it's one of the few modern instances where a main battle tank has a design and has served as a basis for an infantry fighting vehicle. This particular modification sees an extra pair of wheels added to the length and hull design which mounts a 125mm main gun in a traversing turret installation. The engine is relocated to permit the installation of five man fighting compartments to the rear of the hull. The Ukrainian government has attempted to swoon the Turkish army into procuring their T-84 system as well, and developed the T-84U Yatagan prototype specifically for this task. The major difference in this version is the inclusion of the 120mm main gun over that of the original 125mm caliber system as well as an all new auto loading system. The main gun is therefore cleared to fire both NATO standard projectiles as well as the AT-11 sniper anti-tank guided weapon system. The fire control system and communication suites are all tailored to Turkish needs and sidescar armour is as standard. Operators beyond Ukraine are set to include Georgia with 12 tanks ordered and Thailand with some 49 examples on order as of so far. The T-84's first action was recorded in the 2014 Ukrainian-Russian engagements as part of the ongoing war in Donbass. This vehicle has served since 1999 and its main factory is the Mashlev factory in Ukraine. So, there you have it guys, the T-84. Quite an impressive main battle tank, an interesting one, for the fact that I kind of look at it as a bit of a Frankenstein tank. It's one of those vehicles that has been given its derivative from the T-80 design originally, and has kind of been chop shoffed into whatever country it needs it for. Whether it be the Ukrainians using their 125mm gun, to potentially Turkey using the 120mm. A couple of key features that I really like about this vehicle is pretty much that it's submersible. A uh, big key fact to me for most western tanks is they are not, and this is one vehicle that is. And it does have some interesting protection systems on it too, to be able to defend itself against some anti-tank weapon systems. And it is really nice to see that this tank is able to fire the anti-tank missile from the main gun, which is increasing that firing power for 5,000 meters. That's really a long stretch, guys, and uh, it's nice to be able to push a little bit further than some of the more high-tech, expensive tanks out there. Overall guys, this is an impressive vehicle, as always Russian standard type tanks have a very good cross country and off road capability, and I'm sure this thing doesn't let down on that area either. What do you think of this tank? Please feel free to leave me a comment and leave a like if you are new to my channel, please subscribe. And once again, if you want to be notified of any other videos in the future of my channel, please feel free to hit the little bell by the subscribe button so you can be notified in the future. Thank you so much for watching today, I really appreciate it, all the best and bye bye.